What's up everybody, it is Dan Kim. You know. And I am back with another video. And guys, I think I have found the coolest PC case that's out right now, in my opinion, and it is the Height Y60. So today we're gonna take an in-depth look at this case. I'm gonna show you the build that I went with, and I know it's a little bit hard to see, but we'll wait for the big reveal later in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and show the thermals, and I'm gonna go ahead and give my review of the case. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's jump into the exterior of the case and everything that it comes with. And we'll go ahead and start with the front panel connections. Height decided to put these on the bottom part of the case, which I love because most case manufacturers put all their connections on top. So when you have things plugged in, you kind of have this long cable drooping over and it looks super awkward in my opinion. I'll go ahead and throw up a picture of what I'm talking about. Um, but I love how they decided to put these on the bottom. I think it'll look a lot cleaner when cables are plugged in. But we've got our power button. We've got two USB type A's 3.2 and a type C 3.2. And then also an, a combo audio jack. And one of the only things this, came, this case came with is this three and a half millimeter jack to two three and a half millimeter receiving jacks. So not entirely sure what this is used for, but I'll go ahead and throw it up on the screen once I figure it out. And as far as what else it came with, not much, but we got some zip ties and we got a bunch of screws. Um, these screws are used for holding the motherboard to the case or securing SSDs and HDDs to their hard drive cages. Then also came with a manual and the manual will show you, you know, how to remove each panel, um, different kinds of radiator setups and different kinds of fan setups and everything in between. And it's nice and colored and very detailed. All right, so moving on back to the exterior, we've got three separate pieces of glass. Um, and height actually does say that you can leave this panel and this panel off for like an open case kind of design, but they do recommend leaving this one in because it does as act as the structural support for the case. So just say you had a heavy radiator in the top up here and then this piece was removed. There's basically no support for the top and could damage the case. So you always want to at least make sure this piece is in. But yeah, it's all glass in front. It looks fantastic. Definitely giving off the uh, aquarium type vibes. I think it looks sweet. So let's move on to the back. And you'll kind of see this design throughout the case. I mean, you can even see it like at the bottom right here, they kind of stuck to this design all the way throughout. So not only does it look cool, it is functional. Um, they do have a bunch of mesh in here, which kind of acts as like a filter. Um, I kind of wish it was just open just for airflow reasons, but it does look cool and it probably does block some dust. So it looks super sweet. And then the top has kind of the same design as well. All right, so let's jump around over here and we'll take a look at the back. Make sure I don't trip on anything. So here's the back of the case. And then we can fit a 120 millimeter fan right here and it does come pre-installed with a height one, but I'll be removing all of these fans. I'm using my own. It's got two storage trays. They say you can use four, but I don't know exactly where you would store four 2.5 inch SSDs or 3.5 inch SSDs. So I only see these two. Um, I only have one 2.5 inch SSD, so I'll only be using one of these and then we can go ahead and remove this and I can show you what I'm talking about. So these just slide in. So you can bolt a 3.5 inch HDD or a 2.5 inch SSD. So that's super cool. And it just slides in nice and easy. And it's got these thumb screws and then that's where our power supply is gonna go. And you can fit a full size power supply, which is cool. And then they got a little picture right here showing that your graphics card goes right here and then I know I haven't mentioned it yet but this is a vertical GPU mount case only you cannot fit a full-size graphics card here 
So over here you can fit in expansion devices like Elgato's or maybe like Wi-Fi cards or any half height um, PCIe expansion devices, which I actually will not be using. So yeah, back of the case is clean, love it. Everything's basically held in with thumb screws, like the front panel has this thumb screw and then it's removable. Then the back has this thumb screw, remove this and then it's removable. The top just snaps in, the bottom also just snaps in. So let me go ahead and put this thing on its back and uh, I'll go ahead and show you the bottom. All right, so here's the bottom of the case. And as you can see from the side, it's probably got like a one inch gap from the bottom. So it has space to let cool air come in. And then as you can see, it's got this removable panel and let's see if I can do this with one hand. So this kind of acts as a, um, a dust filter and it is removable. And then from the videos I've watched so far, most people are leaving this off because I don't mind cleaning my PC often. So I think I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it like that. So there's no airflow obstruction at all because you can see it's got this filtering mesh. I know it's probably not gonna come off very good on camera, but it's got this mesh in there that's gonna act as a filter and it's not removable. So I think I'm just going to leave this off. And then the bottom, it comes pre-installed with two 120 millimeter fans, but you can see those bolt holes right here. It's got these ones so you can fit 140 millimeter fans down here, which is the route I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have 240 millimeter fans and those blow directly at the GPU. Cause like I said, it's vertical mount only. And usually the problem with vertical mount is thermals. So height thought ahead and decided to include two fans at the bottom and they call it a cold floor cooling solution. So, but yeah, there's the bottom. It's gonna make cable management super easy. You can see all the front panel connectors go through the bottom. So let's go ahead and uh, get all these panels off and then I can show you inside and how the build's gonna go. All right, so all of the panels are off. And like I said earlier, this glass side is held in with one thumb screw right here. So if you remove this, you can remove this panel and then same as the back panel, there's a thumb screw over there. And then once that's removed, you can remove the back panel. But these two glass pieces are a little bit different. The middle one, like I said, is the structural support and there's two screws at the top that hold it in. And then there's two screws at the bottom that hold it in. But I don't think I'll ever be removing it because it is the structural support for the case. But I decided to move this one um, out of the way because I'm gonna be installing my radiator over here. So I wanted the space. And in order to remove this side glass, you're gonna to wanna to remove a screw that's right here, a screw that's right here, and a screw that's right there. And then the top just snaps off really easy. All right, so let's move in here. And this case comes in at about $200 and a large part of the reason why it's $200 is this PCIe riser cable. It's super nice. So basically it's vertical mount GPU only. So this piece is gonna plug into your motherboard and then your graphics card is gonna be plugged in like that when normally it's plugged in like that. So this acts as like an extender. We call it a PCIe riser cable. So my GPU is gonna plug down there. Then we have those two fans down here that are gonna blow directly at it to help with thermals. In this case, we'll fit an ATX motherboard and it's got a ton of room for cable management. So I'm excited about that. A ton of room for um, CPU EPS cable and then 24 pin motherboard's gonna go through here and probably my GPU cables are gonna go through the bottom one. So lots of room for cable management and there even is little grommets down here. I'm not sure if I can get, oh, there we go. Um, so I can fit like my HD audio cables and what else is down there? My USB 3.0, um, all those can fit through there. So that'll be nice for cable management. Everything should look super clean. Then it even does have this little grommet right here, which is a little bit too small. I have three eight pins going to my GPU. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that work but you might be able to fit something through there depending on the build. 
Then on the side over here, you can fit a 240 millimeter radiator, you can fit a 280 millimeter radiator, or you can fit two 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans. So that's cool. Then at the top, you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator or three 120 millimeter fans, however you plan on doing your build. Then that piece at the top, if I can get this to come down, this piece is removable. So there are, I believe, six screws that hold it in. And once all these screws are removed, you can remove this piece and mount your radiator in there, excuse me, your radiator in there and get it all pre-assembled and then just slap it in nice and easy. And then the way I plan on doing it is I'm gonna have my radiator over there, but I'll go ahead and show how I did my build later on in the video. Then let's see if there's anything we're forgetting. And our GPU is gonna basically screw in right here, so I'll remove these two and that'll secure the GPU. And I think I covered just about everything. And then once the build's done, you'll kind of see how everything goes together. It looks like it's going to be really easy to build in. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's get into the build.
So the build is done guys, and this is about a week later past my little build montage and all of the beauty shots, but I've done all my testing um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the setup that I ended up with. And so far it has worked out fantastic. So let's start off with the fans. So I've got the rear 120 millimeter set to exhaust. I've got two 120 millimeter fans up top and I may do a third, but currently I have four intake fans and three exhausts. So for a little bit of positive pressure and the temps I'm getting are actually much better than I thought. So I might just leave it as is. At some point I may add a 120 though, but at that point I'm going to need a fan controller. So I have held off. So the two fans under the GPU, I know I'm not gonna be able to capture them, but those are two 140 millimeter Noctua fans and those are blowing up towards the GPU. And then I have these two fans on the radiator and these are actually set to intake. So when I was doing my reviews, I found a awesome video um, and I'll go ahead and show a picture of the thumbnail and link it down below. But he tested multiple configurations and a side mounted AIO set as intake was actually the best for thermals. And I can go ahead and agree that it's been fantastic. I have not tried any other setups, but so far this is amazing. So that's it for all of the fans. And I've got an ATX board in here. And then I went ahead and mounted the fans in the little radiator nook, I'll call it, when normally the fans are supposed to be bolted and going up this way. But I found when they're bolted up this way, I didn't have much room for my um, EPS cable, my CPU cable. So I ended up just putting the fans on here. So it seems like if you're gonna mount fans this way, you might have very limited room for your CPU cable, just an FYI but it came out looking great guys. And like I said, this is a vertical GPU mount only. And you can see in the back right here, see if I can get that rotate my hand, they screw in right here, the two screws for the GPU. So it is fully secure. No need to worry about a sag bracket, which is awesome. Cause honestly, this EVGA 3080 is super heavy. And I used to get a ton of sag when it was in the uh, upright position, or well, I guess I should say the, the horizontal position. Um, one thing I'm not a, a huge fan of how it turned out was the radiator tubes. So this was the best I could do with the positioning. I really wish this side went up over here instead of there. So the tubes kind of cross. I mean, it looks okay, it looks good, but that's just me being a little nitpicky. And then as far as cable management, it was really easy. I know I'm not gonna probably be able to get this on video. Let me see if I can get my light down there. So I have my front USB cable going through that little middle um, grommet I was telling you guys about, the little middle passway. And then I also have my front panel connectors and then way back there, which is not gonna come on video. You can kind of see the cables, but that's actually a Y split cable for the bottom fans. And then you can see my 24 pin right here. You can see for the motherboard and then you can see my three eight pin PCIe cables. And they're both going through this grommet nice and cleanly. I'm sorry if this is a little bit dark guys, but cable management was fantastic. So let's go ahead and move to the back speaking cable management. And this is one area I'm probably going to clean up a little bit because it didn't come out quite how I wanted to. It's all in there, but because I'm using extensions and the cables for my Antec PSU are so long, I just had to just kind of bunch everything up. The build took much longer than I thought, so I ended up just kind of tossing everything in here. I wanted this to be clear. Let me move that up um, because that's visible from the front. So I kind of zip tied these cables down so they're not visible. And then I got it like a nice little loop right there for the CPU cable. But it came out okay. I mean, it's functional, it's fine. Later on, I might do some custom cables for my PSU, so I don't have to worry about these extremely long cables and my extensions. And then the hard drive looks clean in there and I'm currently not using the hard drive cage in the back. So it's actually just empty. Let's see, what else can I show you guys? This is obviously my motherboard IO, but you can see it fits cleanly in the back right there. Mine actually doesn't have a shield. 
It's just, this is how the back of the motherboard looks. So I didn't have to worry about a shield. And yeah, it came out really clean. The cable management I'll deal with later in the back. Part that really only matters is the front and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And then as you can see, this is a non RGB build. But what I did was, see in the top right here, I mounted this magnetic LED bar. So it's actually not visible from the front, but it provides all of that case lighting that you guys saw. And it's hooked up to my motherboard so I can completely control, you know, what it does. And I love how you can light, you cannot see it from like any part of the front. Like you'd have to be pretty much at the ground to see it. So the LED bar came out looking fantastic, but that's the build guys. It looks amazing. So let's just go ahead and let's jump into the thermals. So for this build, I'm using an AMD 5600X processor and I do have precision boost overdrive enabled. And for the GPU, I'm using an EVGA 3080 FTW3 Ultra Edition, and it's all stock, no overclock or anything like that. But the only thing I did change was I made the fan curves for the GPU a little bit more aggressive. And all these tests were performed at 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature. And I used Cinebench R23 for the CPU benchmark and Heaven 4.0 for the GPU benchmark. And starting it off with the CPU temperatures, Cinebench R23 pins the CPU at 100% utilization, and I saw it pull around 105 to 110 watts, and it was sitting at around 69 to 72 degrees Celsius, and it mainly stuck around the 71 to 72 area, but 72 was the highest temperature that I saw. And for the GPU, it was at about 99% utilization and pulled about 385 watts. And I did see it spike up to around 390, but it was between 75 and 77 degrees Celsius. And it kind of bounced back and forth between 76 to 77, but 77 was the highest temperature that I saw. So let's get into my review for the Height Y60 and my experience with it so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and start off with build quality. Now it seems like Height really took their time with research and development with this case. And I would definitely consider it a premium case. And as a result of being a premium case, all of the components used for it are definitely of the utmost highest quality. And I didn't have any issues with like panel fitment or anything weird like that with the case. But this is gonna kind of segue me into my next topic, which is ease of build. And everything went pretty smooth and the case was super easy to build in. The only things I did run into were one, if you're planning on using 140 millimeter fans at the bottom, they definitely have to be wedged extremely tight next to each other. So when you get one fan in and it's fully bolted in, it's a little difficult to get the next fan in and align all of the holes um, to screw it into the case. I kind of had to push the fan against the other one and it was difficult to get the screw to line up with the case. So that definitely took me a little bit of time to get in there, but it's finally in there, but they are definitely like wedged really hard next to each other. Um, and the second thing was the PCIe riser cable that they included. Once it's plugged into my motherboard, there's a little bracket at the back that plugs, um, excuse me, screws into the case. And once it was plugged in to my motherboard, that didn't really align very well in the back. And I kind of had to bend the tab down a little bit and push it in to line up the screw to screw it in the case. So that didn't really feel super premium. I did ended up go, um, it ended up going in just fine, but I kind of had to force the screw in there and like, I didn't have to bend the bracket, but I had to move it to get it to go in there. But other than that, the build was super easy no issues. Um, it went fairly smooth. So the ease of build, I would say this is probably one of the easiest cases I've built in so far. And next up, I want to talk about thermals. So I was definitely worried about how my system would perform in this because I do have an EVGA 3080 FTW3 and it pulls a ton of power and it runs pretty warm. So I was worried about the vertical GPU mount, but even under the Heaven 4.0 benchmark, I saw a max temperature of 77 degrees Celsius, 
which is actually a little bit cooler than it was in my Fractal Meshify Compact 2. So I'm definitely happy with 77. And it's about on par what it's run in other cases. So I'm happy with that. And then the CPU max temperature with an overclock was at about 72 degrees Celsius. So super happy with the thermals. And I do have my case fans. The uh, fan curves for them are a little bit more aggressive than normal. Um, but even then, if I turn them down, it may be like one to two Celsius degree di difference. So I would be happy with that as well. And next up, I wanna talk about the price. So it's definitely a premium case and it comes in around $200 USD at the time of this recording. And given how expensive PCIe riser cables are right now, they're anywhere from 50 to 100. And this case comes with a, an extremely high quality PCIe riser cable that looks better than anything on the market, I believe. So I would say I would price this riser cable at around 90. So given that, the case is around 110 bucks. So for $110 plus about $90 for the riser cable, I think it's well worth the money. And I actually think it's a really good value. So um, no issues with the price. It's a little bit more expensive than others kind of in this same category. But like I said, with the included PCIe riser cable, I think it's totally worth it. Um, next up are gonna be sound levels. Like I said, I do have my fan curves turned up quite a bit and they all are Noctua fans, so they're definitely quieter than most normal fans, but these sound levels, I can barely hear the fans. Like it's definitely quiet, quieter than my Fractal Meshify Compact 2. And even with the aggressive fan curves, I can hardly hear them. And I think I have like a baseline of like 60%, 65% um, for my fan curves. And the sound levels from this case are definitely lower. And I unfortunately don't have a decibel meter to, re, um, to read how loud they are. But even just from like the, the seat of my chair test, the PC seems really quiet. And then last thing I wanna talk about is my overall impression of this case. And I absolutely love this case. I think it looks amazing. Um, I found myself looking at this case like every 20 minutes, I'll just stop whatever I'm doing and just stare over at the case. I think it's probably one of the coolest cases that's come out so far. And I know everyone's on the Lee and Lee train, the O11 dynamic, but I think this case just blows it out of the water. It definitely does give off the fish tank aquarium vibes, but I think it looks amazing. And the build with the case was amazing. No real issues other than those two things I mentioned, but those were hardly anything, but so far I've loved it. Thermals have been fantastic. Building in it was fantastic. It looks absolutely amazing. I think it's probably one of the coolest cases out right now. Um, and I do think it's well worth the $200 price. So if you're watching this review and you're kind of on the fence about whether you want to go with it, I say, just go for it. You'll, you definitely will not regret it. And you'll be like me and you'll be looking at your PC every five minutes. You'll completely stop what you're doing and just be, just um, eye struck at just how beautiful this case is. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider dropping a like. And if you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing. And I'll go ahead and link everything down below that I used in this build. So if you're interested in any of the products, they'll go ahead and be linked down below. Also, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see y'all in the next video.